Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday Night Legacy Fight Night. I'm your host, Dr. Leo, and this is the MTGPL's Legacy Fight Night event here with my homie, Mr. Jack Dax. How you doing, dude? I'm excited to see some good Legacy action. It's uh, exciting to see some newer builds, newer deck builds. Uh, Reclaimer Elves is looking pretty sick. Shark still is very interesting, in my opinion. So I'm, so I'm just excited to see how this all plays out, you know? So Shark Still is my go-to pick for like my new deck that I'm building. I actually, uh, yeah, I just picked up my Urzas and uh, I have my Sandstills over here in a pile as well. So uh, yeah, uh, Standstill is looking really hot within the meta right now. I'm excited. Seems like our players have made Mulligan decisions. Lemon Mull to five, and Lemon is on the play. Yeah, and this is Lemon's, uh, it's like, workhouse. This is where Lemon likes to sit. Lemon does have the opportune times Ooh. of playing uh, the few, ooh, every once in a while, uh, combo decks like Tess. But this is Lemon's wheelhouse. Living in that good uh, blue-white control, con uh, control shell. Well, Paladin, they are a new player to who are events. And uh, bringing out the Newman build. Ooh, I like those. Uh, I like those basics. I love it. I, I do like the full art fetch too. If you saw that, yes, uh, that is a one hell of an altar. Like I, I really appreciate that. I hope the others are the exact same way when it comes to that altar. I hope so. Uh, hey, Malfi, it's good to see you. Uh, Stand so with Hall of Heliod and Urza socket. That does sound very good. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Like that. That doesn't sound like something I would do. <laughs> I would never do that. I uh uh uh. uh Actually, that's the reason why I, uh, that's the reason why I wanted to build the deck is because of that just disgusting loop of nonstop creating constructs. It does sound very disgusting. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, look at that misty! Woo -wee. These okay, are some so, nice altars. I, I, I so respect is... Paladin's altar, uh, whoever they are. Ooh, we're gonna see the cool nobles too. Ooh, oh no, the cool visionaries. Sorry. Visionary. The cool Elvis visionaries. Yeah. My fault. Yes, those are the uh, F and M promo ones from back in the day. Yeah, this is yeah. a nice list. I think it's almost all fully foiled. This I mean, is probably a separate guys, right? I think this beat it beats Mike's elves list, like for previous. Maybe, yeah. This is gorgeous. I love now, it. That being said, I think Mike does have Beta Force. I think Mike does. Yeah, but you can't get foiled Beta Force. That, that, that that's a problem here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I am a proponent for those full arts. I do love that border around there, though my my yeah. go-to are the original unglued. And here we are, Green Sun Zenith uh, Zenith for one to find the. Oh wait, no, this is not. Is this a Green Sun Zenith again? Or was no, this I just... think we're just hard cracking for a reclaimer. We're just hard cast. Oh, oh yeah, we're yeah. fetching for it. Yeah, for, so... for, for, from the vault stride ever. Always the fun one. Always the fun. So, Lots of people have controversy on that one. Uh, yes. That. Oh, oh my gosh, that was a huge controversy. I remember that. That like blew up all over the place. Yeah, let, let's see. On this list, everything can be foiled except for Allosaurus Rider, Allosaurus Shepherd. I think can't be foiled because it comes in Jumpstart. Um, and yeah, the Bayous can't be foiled, obviously. Uh, the Savannahs can't be foil, and the Gaia's Cradle can be foil um, if they have, you have the, infinite, judge, the Judge promos, yes. If you have infinite money. Yes, if you have infinite, infinite money. money is, is the correct answer. Uh, I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming they would be altered, but no, we're going to see the normal Savannahs. So we are looking at, so this is the Newman version of Elves, as colloquially known, the Reclaimer Elves, the ones that run uh, Elvish Reclaimer over things like the... Uh, What's gonna call it? The so you're on four Elvish Reclaimer instead of four of the Allosaurus Shepherd. Mm -hmm. So oh no, this is running four Allosaurus Shepherd in addition. Oh yeah, I, I am more excited so about the, the, the sideboard. The, the sideboard is very yeah. interesting. Uh, the one of Cabal Pit I do like. Uh, the classic progenitus that we never cast. <laughs> oh, I you know what you say that there's a video out there redo card casting it. Interesting. Uh, what I'm tapping... really interested in. We're going in. We're going in. Oh yeah, this oh. Uh, this deck can very easily. Ooh, the wooden foothills. Oh, all the wooden foothills match. Oh, that's so nice. The windswept heat's match. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes. Oh my gosh. So the Newman L's list is basically focused on always being able to get Gaia's Cradle. <sighs> That's Collectors the move. real. Eh, that will stop the. I mean, uh, I think Paladin little... thinks they're on on Stoneblade theoretically. Uh, you got to remember, our players cool. are in the blind, so. You do have to remember that little factoid. They they don't know what they're playing against. This this could be screaming stone blade. So actually, Lemon hasn't updated this list besides prismatic endings. Just three prismatic endings. No Urza saga. Interesting. I totally thought that there was going to be an Urza saga, and especially since I saw the Hall of Heliod. Ooh, okay, we're miracling a terminus. Yay! Rip the classic. They don't go away permanently. They, they got it somewhere. Yeah. They're just hidden away, not permanently away. Xylophone, Astrid, you, you really want to talk about loving uh, Saga? How many are you trying to slam into DNT? <laughs> Yorian Texas! Oh, and I think those are the From the Vault Terminuses, right? Uh, I do believe that was the front. Yeah, you can yeah. see the foiling. The, the classic From the Vault Terminus. Yeah, so we got two terminus in the main, one supreme verdict. Yeah, this is this is very much like a blue white miracles with four standstills slammed in there because it's like two counterbalance. This is basically a blue white player's wet dream. Oh yeah, we got two moat in the list. Ah, uh, I mean Prez would love Who that. Who plays moat? Prez. Yeah, if I mean if you just so happen to have uh, just two, two moats sitting around, uh. Yeah, a uh, majority of this deck is yep, yep. The two modes cost more than the rest of the uh, the land base. <laughs> so, oh, you know, post terminus, it it's one of those things that elves can rebuild, but do you, it's not a faster rebuild deck, a tribal deck like something like uh, goblins or something like that. It was all based upon this card in Casper Green Sun's two. Unit. Which uh, I do believe this Greenstone Zenith is the uh, from the vault one as well. Interesting. Uh, we're gonna get another visionary. It seems like we're rebuilding the same board. Yeah. Well, yep. almost rebuilding the same board. Let's be real here. Yeah, and I think this is just pretty much where Els wants to be. Greenstone Zenith try uh, reshuffling in, staying equal essentially on cards like. Yep. Like, I, I really do think that elves can rebuild. And honestly, elves just has, like, this whole new avenue of being able to just kill you through Alice or a Shepherd. Being able to just turn your elves into 5-5 five, five beaters is just so effective. Seems like we're going to have a big think here. That's uh, some decision-making trees here. I mean, Paladin is going to draw a card, of course. Yeah, they already so they already Ooh. drew. Ooh, okay, this is where we wanted to see the uh, the the elvish elvish the uh, heritage druid heritage druid. Yeah, so yeah. this elf is what's going to turn on everything else. But the thing is, you need one more one more elf. And uh, honestly, best possible elf right now would probably be Alisor Shepherd. Yeah, yeah, that's the one you always want. Yeah, honestly, being able to turn off force will, force negation, stuff like that. And we looks like we've got a volcanic island. Uh, into a moat. Volcan oh, it's a moat. Yeah, oh, our table spotter has told us what it is. Uh, hopefully, momentarily, we'll get it moved over a little bit out of the glare. But it is a moat. Uh, so this is not game over. Card. This is not game over. There can still be a uh, Archon of Valor's Reach to finish it off. Yep. Because moat oh does allow for flying creatures. Very, very so, interesting tech here. Uh, Moat's not something you see every day. Yeah, I think it's more just to, uh, to try and beat the low to the ground creature base decks. I mean, being able to shut off Uro, being able to shut off Endurance is really powerful. But I think where Moat loses a lot of its threat package is the fact that... Uh, Double hair look at, where, look at where Blue Red Delver is now. Blue Red Delver is just in this perfect world... Oh, okay. So we do have the natural order. Okay, we're gonna sack the heritage turn. One of them. Seems good. Seems seems like a smart play. What what do you think we're getting here? Oh, Argon, one hundred percent. And you name probably instant. Actually, no. I I do like naming instant. 
because being able to one for one for swords of plowshares because yeah, the fair. only other way to get rid of it then is the one of supreme verdict that's left in the deck the one of terminus that's left in the deck uh two of of jace the mind sculptor and the prismatic ending can't touch it so i do like naming uh instant here still well we will soon find out from our table spotter what it is naming Also, what's really cool, if you draw a second natural order, you could basically use Crater Hoof Behemoth as, like, a giant growth pump effect to, for it to get <laughs> in for more damage. What are we naming? This is a hard decision. I mean, do you want to name Oh, this is, sorcery? This is extremely hard. Sorcery I mean, shuts prismatic up ending. Board? Yeah, Prismatic Ending and any other thing. But do you um... care about Prismatic Ending? Prismatic Ending can't hit Archon. And it's uh, so essentially, if you choose sorcery, you're choosing to hit two. Oh, you're hitting out of what? The terminus? Out left in the deck. terminus and terminus supreme? and terminus and supreme verdict. That's it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So there was some questions between the players where it's like, are you running swords or prismatic ending, <laughs> or both? I, I pre I'm pretty <laughs> sure if I'm going against a blue white deck, and especially one that has a volcanic island just glaringly in front of me, I'm saying that they're running prismatic ending. You don't care about prismatic ending because it can't get to six colors, and you you don't care about the two outer left in the deck. Yeah, I think it's got to be. I think it's got to be instant. And Always instant. Make I sure the those, correct name. Make sure those STPs never come online. Yeah, exactly. It also shuts off Brainstorm. It also makes that uh, another natural order off the top because this is a circumferential base effect. So another natural order off the top allows you to turn a Crater Hoof Behemoth into a Pump Spell. Oh, yeah. Or I'm just, like, absolutely insane, and that's, like, something that, like, no one would think about. Well, we got the paper out here, but I think th this needs to be a little bit bigger. Yep, and we're seeing a prismatic uh, ending. Is that for zero? And, uh, just for one. It's always uh, going to be for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let, let me up the font, guys, on that. <laughs> just keep going and going. Just just the whole card says instant. Yep. Thank you, Malfi, for backing up my uh, wild rantings there. I really appreciate you, homie. Oh, yeah. Uh. But also, I just really like the fact there's a one of Grist in this list. In oh. the main board. We're casting a GSZ. For uh, one. Oh, Get a okay. Wireway. Okay, this is where the fun begins. Okay. Get the get the draw engine going. Yeah. I like that. I I mean, I, I really, really feel like... Hey, Palin, they really need to start bashing in as hard as possible oh with this archon yeah just recast yeah yep get your elvish visionary yep action going and you know this is what's so scary about uh elves in this modern era of legacy is the fact that elves used to have to fear you know getting terminus out and just losing the game but because of the fact that it just has so many more avenues of just like killing you We're for and five. killing you so effectively and drawing so many cards it's it does not care yeah you can name instant artifact enchantment sorcery or planeswalker yeah, you can't just name you can't name creature. And there's a ponder. Good old fishy ponder. We're, we're trying to dig ourselves out of a hole. You know, here. you also get you get you also get the advantage of, you know, shutting off brainstorms, force effects. I mean, you're just praying here if you're lemon, you're gonna hard cast you're, the terminus, you're, or you're like you're, crack out the the miracle terminus. Uh, paladin is. Just praying to not see a top deck to fairy, Jason Mind Sculptor, anything. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, that uh, that's the uh, that's what they're praying, praying for. Yeah, and looks like yeah, end step, just bouncing it back. Yeah, we're running one Supreme Verdict, two Terminus, and ooh, ooh, three I like this deck. Oh, hold on, 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 hold on. Uh, we need to stop them. Because you can't cast instance. Yeah, yeah, you can't. That is a symmetrical effect. Yep, good catch. 
Good, good catch. Yeah, that, that can't happen. Uh, I know Watsi is very interesting in how it d determines asymmetrical effects recently, but uh, <laughs> Archon is a fair and balanced magic card where it decides that both players can't cast instances. Well, Archon came out during uh, Battle Bond, before things went like too crazy. I mean, there was... There was it was right before. It was like, what, two sets before Modern Horizons 1? Like, right. Like, like two, like, yeah. So it was before like it went like extremely downhill. So yeah. it was still a powerful set, and it was still really good. I mean, I cracked, I bought a box of Battle Bond because I just loved this set that much. It was that good. Yeah, so we really just resolved that really quickly. That um, you know, we're, we're, we're playing to have fun here, but at the same time, we're trying to keep a competitive integrity here. So we're just going to cast an Elvish Visionary instead. It's all good. We got yeah. it fixed. Yeah, definitely. Still lemons and, in the hole. It'd I be mean, like that. I mean, it's one of those things that we are trying to yeah. make this as very close to, like, if you're playing a competitive LGS-based environment, stuff like that. Uh so this Archon here, I think is what's going to determine this game is, can you remove the Archon? Can you do it without a source of plowshare? Oh, there's a Water Foothills finally. We do see a Water Foothills. So that R is very nice. Whoever oh, altered their wow. stuff. Oof. I do appreciate wow. the legacy alters. That is some just primo, primo alters. Swinging right them for there. five, and we're going down to six. You know, that's that's what's so nice about being a legacy player is the fact that we actually care and really care what our decks look like, what our basic lands look like. You know, we're not just grabbing some stuff from the the bargain bin or something like that because like our decks are like a, a an extension of us. And is that a second moat? Oh, no, that's supreme, supreme verdict. verdict. That that says that's can't be countered. Verdict. Yeah, that says can't be countered. I am a big fan of altars as was Melfi. I've seen Melfi's altered uh, islands, which are definitely not tournament legal, but they're very cool. Oh yeah. Um, uh yeah, that is that's the exact draw that Lemon wanted. Uh being able to hit that supreme verdict and I think now this game is over. Yeah, I do have some nice alters as well. I have a full altered set of preordains. Um because I can never justify to myself buying a preordain in foil. Um uh, I might be able to nowadays. It's been reprinted. They're now. not that bad. Yeah, they're bad. Not I have full art preordains. So yeah. like they're they're pretty dope. Uh my personal alters that I got uh, are my uh, Brainstorm and Ponders, which if you've played on the Discord for a while, you've probably seen them around. I love those Brainstorms and Ponders. The Brainstorms are nice. Yeah, the Brainstorms are really well done. Yeah, I'm a big fan of my, my Tundra altar as well as my uh, alters for my old school deck. Oof. Oh, yeah. The, that Tundra altar you got is super it's, sick. It's super sick. Shout out to my favorite altarist, uh, Broussard Alters and MG Alters. Uh, there are some really good altruists. They're lurking on the OS Discord. Uh, sometimes they lurk on the MTGPL. Um, but give them some love. They love doing altar work, and they are always busy with the commissions. Uh, okay. When am I getting the jet altered? Oh, God. That's in my heart. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm looking at this list here. There is one more way for this game to be over. What you think? Wrist. Grist? Yeah. Grist can win the game because there are a ton of creatures in the uh, the in the graveyard right now. So Grist Ultimate is technically a thing and it's not very hard to do because of the fact that you can tick up one time with Grist, hit a Wirewood Symbiote, which is an insect, trigger it twice on your next turn, you could then create a uh you can then kill your opponent. Because Lemon's down to six. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that have to go right here. Uh, for one, we need an Allosaurus Shepherd, because Allosaurus Shepherd will make Grist uncounterable. And we're also going to need uh, to avoid having a Prismatic Ending in the, in the hand. Otherwise, it's just game over. Hey, Svexis. Yeah, we're on a variant of Elves called Reclaimer Elves. It's a list that is mighty proud. Um, I actually really like how it turns out with the Allosaurus Shepherds. I always call it Allosaurus Rider. Just that card always lingers in my brain. Uh, and Everyone, it's like everyone does that. Yeah. So Shark still has landed a moat, which pretty much is yeah. game over. But because of the fact that Paladin, they were able to land a very fast uh, Archon of Valor's Reach and get in some really solid damage, 
uh, there is still a chance that Paladin can still come back and win this. But, I mean, these two moats in the sideboard uh, are going to have to be something that you have to consider in the sideboard. And uh, I don't think there's a single... Uh, no, there is a way. Prismatic ending in Elves is actually super interesting because you can get up to technically five colors. It, it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. Um, we have some commentary from Lemon from in-game from our table spotter. Apparently, Lemon said, man, I need another board wipe already. So, <laughs> Yeah, uh, like, and that's the thing. Elves rebuild really fast. Yeah. But all this is doing is, especially if you get another board wipe, uh, that being said, the other board wipe left in the deck is Terminus, which isn't going to feed Grist. But this game is all going to come down to just that Grist. Because as we're looking at here, there's uh, creating this massive board isn't going to do anything. There is no dark depths in this list. No dark depth in this one, Lord uh, Michael. It's uh, it's pretty much you're using the reclaimer to always be able to find uh, not Green Sun Zenith, but always be able to find Gaia's Cradle because Gaia's Cradle is the most important land in the entire deck. Everybody knows that. It's the number one thing that elves look for. So because of that, this is oops, all Gaia's Cradles basically. Yeah, the deck list should be on the left and right side of the screen, unless you're on mobile. If you're on the mobile app of Twitch, it should be right below the screen. Yeah, interesting, though, uh, no Yamamaya in this list. I would have really hoped to see one of those. I know uh, Elves is pretty good. MTG Master, what up? Uh, welcome to the stream. Oh, there's Doing Leo, some hey, Paper oh. Legacy. Hey. Good I hey, Thank you. Hey, welcome. So, well, I mean... When we're talking about this matchup here, though, this is where our Lemon's finisher is, and this is what's really interesting. Quarter Grace. Uh, Quarter Grace plus Moat basically makes it so that you're, you're getting a free, uh, what's I'm call it, uh, Entreat the Angels every yeah. single turn. And it, yes, it's... Fexus, the plan here on Paladin's side is to either get Grist to get there or get Archon. We've already seen Archon come out, and Archon did work for a little while until uh, Lemon had a board wipe the Supreme Verdict. Uh, you know the fact that is. the fact that uh, Archon put that much damage in actually makes Gris that lethal of a yep. threat. So you know if you're able to stick an Alice or a Shepherd plus also the Gris to make it uncounterable, like put your opponent to the test. Say, do you have the removal spell? Oh yeah. Yeah, so I, I've been really digging Grist. Uh, it, it didn't impress me as much as I thought it would be. Uh, like, I was thinking that I was probably, like, th uh, throwing this as a two of, three of in most of my, you know, bad Nick Fitch uh, sacrifice decks. But in those decks, it just it just doesn't do enough. And I'm just trying to find a better synergy with this, with their plus one effect. Because a three mana walker that produces bodies every turn, that we saw how powerful that was in the Yoko era. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually excited to see how Grace plays out in this matchup. Um, it's, yeah. it's one of those Planeswalkers that kind of annoys me to death because it has such a weird ability on it where it's a creature unless it's on the battlefield. It's so weird. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, this fact that it is this alternative win condition in Elves, that like when it's been multiple board wipes, it's beaten to the ground. It's like, cool, plus up a couple times, kill you. Okay, we're going to shortcut here. So, MTG Master, uh, if you're in a meta with, like, a lot more combo, I really like the one hoof, one Archon. Because if you put Archon, you just land a fast, natural order, go, like, the the no-rock versions of, like, the early, like, 2010, 2011 era of Legacy, where you're just trying to stick a fast, natural order, put the Archon onto play. And you can just name Sorcery, and then all of a sudden, Sneak Attack, uh, well, Show and Tell can't go into play. Uh, Storm can't do their thing. Like, honestly, you can just knock out a good part of someone's game plan by naming Sorcery. Uh, yeah. Then, also, you could just pretty much beat better than anything else in the air, and it kills Endurance so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, to answer Sex's question, the way you win is with Grist. Um, you Grist ult, and that's how you win. Um, Grist's ult says minus five. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. Uh, and I'm yeah. pretty sure we have a decent amount of creatures in that graveyard, considering how many times we've been board wiped now. 
Yeah, exactly. There's a decent chunk of creatures in there. So Grist is an alternative win condition. I think Paladin is pretty much searching for an Allosaurus Shepherd to protect it for the counterspell side of things. I think so we just. I think this is an Allosaurus Shepherd. It's an altered Allosaurus Shepherd. I'm pretty sure. Oh, is that? I think that's is what that it is. An altered Allosaurus. Yes, Shepherd? it is. I was wondering what. Oh, okay. So we do have an Allosaurus Shepherd here. So because it can't be foiled, it's be. altered. <laughs> of course. Okay. Someone likes their elves game, and mm -hmm. honestly, yeah, yeah. So, yes, Gris oh, can so be searched for because Gris is a creature. In so Spexus, uh, Gris says as long as Gris isn't on the battlefield, it's a one-one insect creature in addition to its other types. So it could be Green Sun Zenith for, it could be Living Wish for, it could be Worldly Tutored for, it could be your commander, and on top of all of that, it's a three mana walker. It's dumb. Like, it, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, it can't be force negation. It's so it's, good. It's so dumb. The amount of times yeah, I've maybe. tried to force negation it. Ugh. Uh, Disgusting. Wait, maybe I do need to try more often with Gris. I just need to play more Magic. I've just been so swamped with work. Yeah, I, I'm on that same boat. I've been playing a lot of Modern recently. I'm playing a lot of variants of Dead Gael and Modern with Vindicate. Uh, but I need to get back on my grind and Legacy, my true love of Dead Gael and Legacy. Yo, uh, honestly, with Modern, uh, Saffron Olive just posted a Siege Rhino reanimator list for budget magic. I was like, I own most of these cards. I love playing most of these cards. I play that. Uh, no, it cannot be negated uh, because Grist is not, a, is not a Planeswalker while you're casting it or in hand. Um, it's a creature. It is still a creature. Yeah. Yeah. Why run it, creatures? It, just run white black pox. Yes, let me just let me just get some uh let me just get some legends uh pox, you know, some chains. That, that, give me the two chains. Two chains. And yo, I if you walk into a any tournament or anything like that and you go turn one dark ritual chains of Mesopotophiles, you just get automatic just like badass points in the in the room. It's like everyone recognizes real. Like, everyone recognizes that, you know, you may not go, like, the best record, but you are going to make everybody's life miserable, and you're going to kill some poor uh, Del Delver player's soul. You're just going to rest with someone. And there is a bit of a, a discussion in chat. Yes, it is correct. It is a walker creature when it's being cast. Um, yes. It, it's not super relevant um, to note. You just can't negation it. If you want a more technical definition, it is a walker creature. See, Spexis, but once it hits the field, it's only a walker. Yes, so once it hits the field, it's only a walker. It is. If Fairy can't bounce it, you can't source the plowshares it, anything like that. It's so dirty. It is It is such a weird magic card to read. It's priceless. I love that, I love that Lemon is not expecting it. Lemon is probably wondering why this game is still going on. So Lemon has like, bounced oh, have... the Allosaurus Rider. Oh, the Allosaurus Shepherd? Yeah, the Allosaurus Shepherd. Wow, I keep saying Allosaurus Rider. I just think it's a rider. My fault, y'all. Yeah, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to come down no matter what because it can't be it can't be countered. Yeah, but... and then response is to bounce it on on uh, Paladin Zone. Paladin bounced it yep. with the uh, with the Wirewood. You know what's wild is the fact that. When Paladin plays a Allosaur Shepherd, there are basically effectively two uh, Teferis on the board. Because oh, yeah. Allosaur Shepherd shuts off instant speed counter spells. Just does not care about it. Doesn't care when it's on the stack. Doesn't care when it hits the field. It just does not care. Ooh, we're going to see the, the very nice yeah. answer again. And Pickle Pop, Pickle Pop is right. Uh, Pickle Pop, I, I tried to force the negation a Cabal Ritual. Um, I thought it was a therapy, and I'm like, nah, never mind, this is bad. <laughs> I don't care. And I think um, I also tried to... I also saw someone in my league matches uh, cast an Infernal Tutor without doing the, the trick with it, so I completely forgot the alternative mode of Infernal Tutor is actually just to search for a card that's in your hand. Yeah. Ah, yes. What's better than one Allosaurus Shepherd, two Allosaurus Shepherd, both altered? Uh, gorgeous, if I will say. Well, that's annoying. It comes from Lemon. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got Green Sun Zenith. This is going to be Green Sun Zenith for three. This is going to be Grist. This has Guarantee to be Grist, it. right? Yeah. This is going to be Grist. 
And I bet you Lemon's going to be like, okay, yeah, what do I care? You're getting green stones for three, and it's not going to counter it, not thinking about the grist. <laughs> What's relevant yeah. in this list? You it's get, a three you drop. Get, ah, exactly. probably not Lemon's thinking grunts. about it right now. Oh, I was like, Lemon's like, oh, hold on, hold on. Also can't counter it. There's two Alistair Shepherds on the uh, board. You can't counter it either. <laughs> well, he's sitting there just like, oh, what's happening here? Oh, this is what I was saying. This is what's going to happen. Paladin just needs to land an Alistair Shepherd to not care. There is no Rex Age. Lamb a Grist. And just in the list. have it. Yeah, no Rex Age in the list. I think if if this Grist comes back at turn cycle, <laughs> we might have GGs. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, Grist starts at... A decent amount, right? Yeah, three uh, three loyalty. Plus it twice. Four. Yeah, plus it twice, and then you minus. I mean, the downside is you gotta you gotta get there. You, you do actually. Yeah, have to get there. lemons realize when what it's happening. <laughs> lemons like, oh shit. We oh, have a reader. <laughs> we have a reader. Someone's looking up this oracle text. Yeah. <laughs> like no, no, that, that that can't work. It's like, oh yes, it can. Oh yes, it can. Oh, this is dirty. Gris is so dumb. Uh, see, I I love these nuances, so especially the fact that they're in green, like questing beast. Like when someone tries to maze of it, my questing beast, it's just the best thing in the world. I'm like, that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, we do have some commentary from the table again. Uh, can I counter that? Can I do anything? Nope. Go for it. Nope. I'm gonna have to nope. look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon, I love you, homie, but this this is what I love to see. Just this dopey black green planeswalker that is gonna just take over this game and win it. I also forgot minus two, minus two on Gris means you can sack a creature, and when you do, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Yes. Yes. So you can. It is can relevant. Nuke. It is relevant. Yep. Uh, this is great. I love this. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately here, we don't have a reach creature to block this flyer, which is the only thing. And I think Paladin was trying to count on hitting over a Wirewood Symbiote, because then now this 4-4 four, four flyer can get in at Grist and ruin all of our fun. Yeah, you usually, usually want to hope for that. I mean, you, you can't really do too much. Uh, that being said, I do love the fact that you can also unearth Grist, which is one thing I don't <laughs> want to try. Unearthing Grist seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it is. Ooh, I, I Wirewood on... just ate an STP, so Wirewood is going away. Yeah, makes Angels sense. Angels do beat Grist, yes. Um, the only way it doesn't beat Grist is if you just mill a bunch uh, with Grist. Yeah, I think the play was uh, if you flipped over a Wirewood Symbiote, you would get uh, you get the extra counter because it does repeat the add the extra loyalty ability, and so because of that, I think unless Lemon attacks here, I mean, I I wonder if Lemon is gonna attack. I mean, Lemon should. If, if uh, Lemon doesn't attack, two angels so far on board. I wonder how many cards are in graveyard. I do have to wonder. Uh oh, oh! I think uh, Lemon took some damage for a fetch. Yep. Oh yep yep. Down to five. Uh okay, so we do have the Hall of Helium Generosity here, That's which isn't gonna do anything. There's no uh, there's no uh, Shark Typhoon in the graveyard, which is there is a standstill. Part. There is a standstill in the graveyard. There's a standstill. Yeah. Maybe you wanna, which maybe you just wanna draw cards. Looping standstill is basically just showing off at this point. All good in the neighborhood. Maybe you just want to draw cards. Have you thought and, about that? Yep. And Gris hits the bin, and I think that's GG's for game one. I do think that's GG's. Is there another Archon? Nope. We're done. Yeah, that's GG. There's no other way to win. Yep. Underdog did have the chance, but I think that is over. So, do we want to talk about, oh, like going into sideboarding here because elves is ridiculously fast on the play. I mean, the sideboarding here, I mean, hard to say. I mean, you can go for deafening silence if you want. I think prismatic ending coming in. You need to get rid of the moat. It, it has to go. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. So, yep. Going to uh, sideboards here. So for elves, we got one cabal pit, three deafening silence, three ley line of the void, Three prismatic ending, one progenitus, one uh, source of plowshares, and three thoughtsies. 
So here's my question then. Do you go for the prismatic ending to just exile the moat, or do you go with the Thoughtseize to just rip it out of their hand? That's a hard question. I mean, if I'm... If I am on the driver's seat in Elves, do I really want to be thought seizing people when I'm trying to combo and like get there to where I need to go? I don't. I don't really think I want to be doing that often. Do you want to be thought seizing to clear the way for your combo? Is also how you should be thinking about it. Um, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, I I, I do a split probably. Um, I could see a I could see, I a, could split. see a split. I mean. Hey, chat, I mean, Discord members, you, you you know that I like Discord. You know that I'm going to be playing, hey, the Cabal Therapies, the Thoughtseizes, and stuff like that. I do think that Thoughtseize, I think, is the play here because it has just multi-effect. Hey, you can also remove a hate piece. You can also remove a uh, uh, a counterspell to get you through if you don't have the Allosaurus Shepherd. But if I'm Lemon in this situation, I think I'm cutting. I think I'm cutting Force Effects. Because I don't oh, yeah. think force effects are good against uh, elves anymore. Yeah, I don't think it's really that great here. Uh, on Lemon's position, we're looking at one Blood Moon, one Containment Priest, two Disenchant, one Flusher Storm, one Humility, one Meddling Mage, one Mountain, one Prismatic Ending, two Red Blast, one Rest in Peace, one Stony Silence, one Supreme Verdict, and a Surgical Extraction. A lot of one ofs. Yeah, lots of one ofs. Like, the consistency of finding those one ofs is my question like it's so hard uh obviously go to best ones are going to be supreme verdict uh i don't mind meddling mage here put on natural orders like their primary win condition or green sun zenith uh other than that probably the extra prismatic ending for more one for one removal you have to be able to oh one for one elves and also containment priest so i'd like i'd like to bring in four cards to be able to cut the one, uh, the two force negations main and at least two force of wills. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think force is that great in this matchup now. Uh, the Allosaurus Shepherds just kind of blanket it. I would go more for you know the Supreme Verdict uh, plan. Uh, Blood Moon would be relevant because you're playing a lot of uh, basics, and we've seen what Paladin has. Paladin is playing a lot of non basics. Um, yeah, but at the same time, it's elves. They can produce five colors of mana, which is their dorks. Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking about board wipe and shutting off things and clearing it out the way, I mean, you are not you can't cast your dorks when you don't have any lands. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, I mean, you definitely have some solid cuts here between the force effects and bringing in the the board wipes. I think, I think you could definitely cut most of that. I mean, I don't even like counterbalance in this matchup because mm. counterbalance just sucks to Allosaur Shepherd again. Yep. I think you get your containment priest. I think you get, you know, a meddling mage, probably a supreme, and then a blood moon if you want it. Yeah, truth. So, you can do chat, humility you, too. Humility is fun. Chat, what are you thinking about uh, when it comes to this sideboarding? And uh, let me let me know what you think about this current meta in Legacy. Uh, I think it's a little bit wild. Uh, I still think you know we're gonna have have to have the talk about Delver at some point. But there's still just so many cards that have just entered the format recently that have just really shaken up how things are going through. I mean, I haven't even had the chance to test most of my decks because of uh, like there's just so much to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many powerful cards came with Modern Horizons too. Some a little bit better than others. Um, but it's really good to see some good legacy action again. Uh, and this time, Paladin will be on the play. Should, should be interesting to see how this turns out. Yeah, uh, L's being the faster decks, and we do see the Once Upon a Time here. Uh, this is one of the additions that I know are... A lot of L's players do split between, like, two to four copies, I think. I do really like it, just because of the fact that it increases your consistency with finding Gaia's Cradle, and that's what's important. Yeah, so we're getting an off-topic question from Master, but the question of how Opposition Agent works. If we're talking about how it works over a webcam, uh, when you fetch, uh, and then they response with an Opposition Flash, I'm assuming that's the play they'll make there, um, you actually get to control what they do. Um, so you're probably going to fetch for like the most expensive land and force them to either play it or just force them to exile it. It's a fun card. Uh, over webcam, you just get to show your deck base to play in your hand. Yep. Um, that's like um, the best way. I love our new NTGPL dry erase tokens. The new tokens, yeah. A lot of fun. We're, we're getting those uh, tokens definitely. out for whoever wins the drawing that I need to send out to. Uh, every league, we give them out. 
Um, they're a lot of fun, those tokens. Uh, oh, yeah. They work. Uh, they're fully dry erased. God, this Missy's so pretty. But, uh, yeah, use it for my op agent in Neostorm. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to get a Bayou here, and we're shortcutting. Uh, we did a Once Upon a Time for free because it was in the starting hand. Uh, too good for modern. Rest in peace, Once Upon a Time. Is it banned in modern? Yeah. It got banned two years ago? Three years ago? It was too good in Tron, I think? I can't remember what the deck was. It's a lot of shortcuts. Uh, uh, so, M2G Masters, no, we are not selling these as of right now. As of yet. Uh, as of yet. Uh, uh, we're doing them as door prize tests to see how people like them and such like that. And then uh, if people like them, might consider opening it up. Uh, yeah. If people do love them, we'd love to you know, sell them, give them to our community, all that jazz. Um, it just depends on the feedback that we get. Uh, we'll hopefully have a poll at some point and maybe some survey stuff uh, for the Discord entirely to ask some questions about feedback about the Discord, our tournament structure, prizing, all that jazz. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Hopefully we'll have something for you. Yeah. And we uh, we want to like focus on the community and building mm -hmm. this awesome uh, community as well as the fact that, you know, this is all about just keeping eternal magic alive. That's yep. all that matters is keeping eternal magic alive. Yeah, because for some of us, this is our local meta, our local community. Um, I'm stuck in the southeast of America, and we don't really have any good locals. Um, we have about, I know about the six legacy players in my state. Uh, that's how small it is. Uh, we did so we do the have, We do have a thought season, a brainstorming response. Uh, also, a little bonus side uh, side bit. This is why you always name Cabal Therapy with Brainstorm. Uh, you always name Brainstorm with Cabal Therapy because of the <sighs> fact that so many people forget that it once they say naming, the spell has resolved, and you could just snag it. Yeah, there are some really cool legacy events happening. Um, we do have, outside of us, there's some really cool TOs out there doing some cool events. Um, the bigger ones. Even if you have local ones, it's great. Um, the bigger ones, I know the Legacy Open, the Legacy Pit Open's happening, I think, in August or September. Um, the 100K in Missouri slash outside area of Illinois um, in October. Um, and then, of course, if you're lucky to have a local LGS with the Weekly Legacy, support your local LGS. Yeah, so it looks like we got Meddling Mage there, Shark Typhoon, Prism... Oh, no, it's a Supreme Verdict. Like Shark Typhoon, Prismatic Omen, and Ponder... Uh, not prismatic omen, prismatic uh, ending. ending. Uh, I do like taking either the supreme verdict or the prismatic ending here. I mean, they're both very good. I think supreme verdict is probably a little bit better. Um, just a tad. I mean, it just depends on your hand too. I mean, if you have an Alice or a Shepherd, throw that out and just have fun. Oh, oh, Doc, there's a question on the Brainstorm for Cabal Therapy. Yeah, so uh, for those that know me, I love playing Cabal Therapy. Uh, I think it's one of the most... Uh, oh, we see Prismatic Ending taken. That, that must mean that more prepared for the one-for-one uh, -for -one game. Uh, more afraid of the one-for-one -one gameplay. Interesting. Probably like a fast natural order term. Okay. Uh, so we do see... So when it comes to Cabal Therapy, a lot of people say, you know, always name Force of Will because it's the most commonly played card and stuff like that. So I don't agree with that mindset, especially if only if you are trying to be forcing through something. So like back in the days when Reanimator ran Cabal Therapy, it was to name Force of Will to remove all copies of the card in hand and to make sure that you've cleared the way. But if you're playing a fair game plan with... Uh, uh, like either even something like dredge edge yeah it's a 50 50 hey between brainstorm and forceful because the thing is if you name force of will they don't have force will in their hand but they have brainstorm your follow-up of cabal therapy is way worse there's because now that information that you have is not solid so you can uh, it is a higher chance a higher chance of a double mischance rather than if you hit brainstorm on the first one it makes that information uh, available throughout the turns so uh it's one of my go-to names if i'm in the blind if i know i'm playing against a blue deck it's almost always gonna be brainstorm sorry to go off on uh that little bit of a side tangent uh if you want to know more about cabal therapy uh come to the discord and ask me about uh neostorm sometime and i can tell you about the greatest combination in magic being seagate storm caller plus uh cabal therapy to make your own mind twist the classic it's so meme. much fun the classic meme uh, it's it's such a classic meme and i love it 
And of course, if you want to hear more about this kind of stuff and more in depth, we do have a podcast. Um, there should. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, exclamation point podcast in the chat will get you a link to our podcast for the Discord. Mm -hmm. we talk about all things legacy as well as like recent events. We talk about decks that we like, spoilers. Uh, I there's one of them in, in there where I rant about my favorite deck for a little bit because the deck's fun. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's a good place to be. Ooh. We got a but, or Candyman on the stack. Thank you for. Uh, I was gonna say Orange Candyman for a second <laughs> there. <laughs> but thank you, uh, thank you for the follow. Oh. oh, are we are we swinging in? Is that what we're doing here today? Oh, you gotta get the beats when you can. You gotta get the beats when you can. We you are know. swinging one. Oh. 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 We are ambush training. viper. Yeah. No. No, it's two two. Two Yeah. Two two. We are swinging. Jeez. Don't you play white cards? Yeah, but I don't play my <laughs> Containment Priest that often. It's not... Do I ever... Whenever I block the Containment Priest, I'm blocking for other reasons. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Uh, we do see the Reclaimer, which... I, I'm i really... I think the bottleneck here has got to be mana. By looking at the way Paladin took that Prismatic uh, ending... I've got to be thinking that, you know, preparing for a faster natural order or something like that oh, yeah. to be able to fight like this. Because, I mean, I do think bringing the one progenitus is also correct in this matchup. Because against control decks, you just want to slam the progenitus and try to win that way. Agreed. I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can win this. Um, we're playing to our outs here, of course. Paladin is probably looking at their... Deck and thinking, uh, I need an Archon, that would be nice. Naming Sorcery would be good times. Um, yeah. Could also name nope. Enchantment. Could also name Enchantment. Depends on how much you hate... Um, how much you hate... Uh, Standstill? Or Standstill. Moat? Yeah, depends on how much you hate Standstill or Moat. Yeah, but this Containment Priest locking down that, it's gotta be, it's gotta be hard. Uh, for removal... I hope those prismatic endings came in. Otherwise, hey, this might be a little bit hard to go to grind through. Yeah, I mean, you do have a lot of different variables that you can go around with here. Um, it just all depends. I mean, Lemon is in a driver's seat. I mean, Lemon is up on one game, so just all depends. I would really like to see Gris go off. You know, milling and milling and milling. Uh, oh yeah, that's a ton of fun. I, th I really do think that Gris. Uh, on here, on a uh, relatively empty board, could do some really, really strong stuff. Being able to churn through your deck and just produce a ton of insects. Uh, I mean, that, I think that's the reason why they went to Grist in the main is because of the fact that Elves player just wanted something to do post terminus. And honestly, can't fault them on that because it, it it's so hard to catch up a post terminus when you're not uh, prepared for it. And so many decks, decks that are on Miracles going to, uh, like, I think two to three Terminus. And then, like, I think most of them are playing one to two Engineered Explosives in the main, yeah. in the side as well. End of turn, casting a Swords on the Wirewood. Making sense to me. Um, there was a question about ruling, about Grist. Can Grist come onto the battlefield? Um, the belief here is yes, because it doesn't see the battlefield as a creature. Um, that is a weird conversation to have and probably something that will come I... up. I'm also curious about that because I thought Grist might have been able to get around Graft Digger's Cage, but it, I don't think it can. But getting around Containment Priest is definitely an option here. Yeah. Because Graft Digger's Cage, is, it, it can't leave. Um, and then Containment Priest is creatures cannot enter the battlefield if they were not cast. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't enter the battlefield as a creature. It yeah. enters the battlefield as a planeswalker. Very so weird. it's a very it's a very weird niche rules interaction. Uh, uh, Mr. Jack Tax is one of our resident uh, judges, so I will leave ruling up to you when it comes to that as a uh, lowly, not even rules enforcer or just knows a lot about a game. We're going to go down to 17 here, double fetching with a Prismatic, uh, Vista, and a... Uh, looks like Flooded Strand. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if you want to talk about like cards that were like uh, obscure enough to get 
to have missed like the initial spotlight in Modern Horizon One. Ooh, moat. We're gonna see the moat again. I mean, okay. It'd be okay. Like that. I'm okay. assuming we're activating here to go fetch for something that we're scared of. Guys, uh, I do wonder. Or cabal pit, cabal pit. Yeah, cabal, cabal pit's pit. a way to beat it. Yeah. Uh, and we're at threshold. Pit. Probably cabal pit. Cabal kit is cute. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for those that don't know the OG Cabal Pit, uh, tap to uh, tap to produce a black, uh, deals one damage to you. Threshold black and tap it, sacrifice it, deals uh, target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. So it's a way to kill this, as well as, you know, get your game back going. And some back in the old days with lands, they would loop this against like Thalia based decks. But we know we're finding the guy's cradle here. Yeah, we're going to find the guy's cradle. I don't think we're really too worried about containment priest just yet. Hey, you're not wrong. Uh, it's definitely hey, still something to be worried about, in my hey, opinion, just because, I mean, card is good and shutting off like eight out of your eight, eight cards out of your entire deck is still pretty powerful. But, I mean, there's a moat on the field now. Like, you're going to win slowly no matter what. Agreed. Agreed. And it looks like we have an altered, like, snow covered -y Gaia's Cradle, I think, is what we're looking at here. Can't really tell. Uh, it looks full already to me, and it might be snow. I can't tell. Ooh, it might be. Ooh, I wonder if they have a, uh, like, a theme going. I like, their Gaia's Cradles are different. Uh, oh, different it is a winter seasons. cradle. It is a winter cradle. That is what it's, it's supposed to be. It's a winter cradle. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's that's really cool. I do I, like the I peak of their deck. That. Their deck is very, very nice. It seems like Paladin yeah. is a bit thinking. Uh, not the greatest board state that you can be in. Uh, if you play into the creatures, you're going to play into a Supreme Verdict. Kind of sucks. So, uh, that's exactly... Okay, so this is the one... Uh, this is exactly what I was going to bring up. It's like, okay, Time the only go. creature that I would want to play right now is going to be Shepard. Because it guarantees that everything else resolves. Like this upcoming... Yeah, the Green Sun's the end. Okay, so we are going to go find Grist. I imagine we're going to go get Grist. That makes the most yep. sense to me. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So this might give Paladin the chance here. Uh, you're going to get the Grist. I'm going to plus it, right? Priest, because it enters as a Planeswalker. Just it keep plusing it? Exiled. Just keep plusing And you just keep on, keep on plusing. Churn through your library. And just try to kill your opponent. Because I guarantee you, Lemon didn't bring in Graveyard Hate. It'd be funny if Lemon brought in the rip. Just, I swear to God, if Lemon just, 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 just slams a rest in peace, I'm going to wonder what the hell he cut. Just slams a rest in peace like, I was ready. I got this. That'd be... That'd be Excuse sickening as well. me as I bow before your galaxy brain play. I'm I'm glad that the one percent of exact encounter of this happening happened for you, and I'm glad it happened on camera. Oh, there's the guy that's cradled the other one. Yep, and it looks like it is a seasonal, yep. seasonal theme. Yes, the yeah, next exactly. level play. Little did we know, Lemon was playing 4D chess the entire time. <laughs> oh yeah, mill cradle, not not the best mill. Ooh, we're going to see a close-up of the winter. Very Ooh, nice paladin. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got respect. That's some pretty solid altar game here. Yeah. The other one seems to be like a spring. Yeah. Oh, it's four seasons yeah. from altar. Season. I'm excited Good for the fall. Cool. Fall is my favorite. Uh, fall is my favorite season. So There's Supreme the Verdict. Season. Yeah, that's fine. You, you deal yeah, with it. Yeah, don't care. You, you don't deal care. With it. You know what that did? Cool. Plus four damage. Yeah, it'd be like that. You just keep plusing her. Lemon is on such a clock right now. Just, just go. <laughs> yeah, prismatic ending. Uh, it did come in. Okay, it did come in. Also, Not what you want to see milled. Oil. Not what you want to see milled though. Not what you want to see milled at all. Oof, oof, oof. I like the it foil. off. It's nice. I had the I had the chance to buy one at ten bucks, and I should have done that. Should've I have one. That. I tr I traded for it. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I got. I, I need to figure out what I want for. I want the mole old border, but like, I've got one foil that isn't old bordered, and then one foil old border. I, I still need to trade the person for it too. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, okay. I appreciate what's happened here. Yeah, thirty-five dollar monkey. Did did we not get 
Uh, oh, he needs to produce the insect token. Uh, yes. We do need insect token. Yeah. There I'm it is. It. So I really so like the Paladin fact that Grist must on... also be a judge, because uh, that is a judge. Pro that is a judge um, token. That's a judge token. That is a specialty judge token. It's a construct. Really? Yeah, that's a judge token. I had no idea. It is a judge token. I have the same ones, and on the back is usually uh, the write up for reviews that you got back from the judge updates. So Paladin wow. must be a judge. Uh, don't know what level they are, but uh, they must be a judge or know a judge. That makes sense. I, I do know that a lot of judges do enjoy playing uh, Legacy as like their yeah. 60 card choice nice format. Which honestly doesn't surprise me, especially if you spent enough time like in the format uh, or around magic during that time. Okay, so we are just going off here. Okay. Okay, so we have a ton of mana that we just produced. We are about to start tapping for green. Okay, so if we have an extra green, we can sacrifice, use the Reclaimer's ability. What is that? Uh, is that another Allosaurus Shepherd? I have no idea. Oh, it's oh, a catacomb. That's a catacomb. Yes, that's that's catacomb. cool. Oh that's my cool. gosh, that is a gorgeous altar. Yo, that's, that's it's cool actually, as crap. It looks like a St. Michael's Catacombs. That's cool. That is... Wow. That is a gorgeous altar. Okay, I need the names. I need names. I need, like, rates. Like, I need, get, I need to get some of my altars I, I, going. I wonder if it's an altar sleeve or an altar altar. I, I don't know. Because the altar yeah. sleeves are on the on the Gaia's Cradle, so I'm curious. Yeah, it is a true. very cool altar. It is a super sick altar. Definitely not recognizable, but holy god, I love it. Yeah. Um... I clearly missed something, so we have a token on the field. I just don't know what it is. Uh, it's just the other Grist token. It's just another Grist token. No, 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 no. on Lemon's side. Oh, uh, oh, it's looking like a shark, or a shark, shark that was shark. Uh, cycled. Yep, cycle shark. Okay, that makes more sense. Yep. Which, this is going to put pressure on the Grist. Double moat. Okay. 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 Okay, okay so... This is this is the the bad part is the fact that elves has no flyers here. No, so, no, no, it does, it does. Archon's still around. We haven't seen Archon cycled out. Okay. Oh, oh, we're second Gaia's cradle. I imagine that we floated mana with it. I imagine. Oh, but this is on end step. Really? Okay. Hmm. I don't know. What did we get? Getting a fetch land. I I would think that Gaia's cradle is better than a fetch land. Um, unless Paladin is really trying to mill their deck out here. Double fetch. It just depends. Double this fetch. this could be this could be a mill a, a mill tactic. I mean, but it only counts creatures. That's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but I'm I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get my deck thinned. Is what I'm thinking. I'm trying to thin my deck, so I'm trying to hit as many creatures as possible, right? Okay. Yeah, I could see that, but I mean, you're playing a very tight game with that. It doesn't seem. Oh yeah, it's in, it's incredibly it's tight margin. It, it's ex extremely marginal, is my whole point. Yes. It is also possible that they have a, a guy's cradle in hand. Very possible. Yeah, you are not wrong. It is entirely possible. Uh, so we are sacking to kill the, sacking to get them to sack a creature. Okay. A creature. I, I actually don't remember. Is it destroying? Gris has some weird. Text. Yeah, so it's sacrifice a creature, destroy target creature. Yes. When you do destroy target creature or planeswalker, relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it destroys uh, like any planeswalker or creature is pretty hot. I've uh, I found that 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 can be very good, especially if you're sacrificing things for value. Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, we're getting back a prismatic ending. <laughs> Not good. That's. Not good, and we have three colors of mana here, and that Grist is going bye-bye. Bye, Grist. Oof. That hurt. That that hurts. Sincerely okay, so missed. Now, Our win condition now is we're Archon. On Archon. We're on Archon. If it's still in the deck. 
praying that it's in the deck, I guess. Uh, I think more praying, uh, praying to hit a natural order. Uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to green sun zenith for it because we don't have the the mana. Uh, what's it call it? We don't have the mana, but uh, it's, it's rough. I, I I really do think that like more importantly right now is finding that natural order. Just gotta find it while it's still uncounterable before a board wipe goes off. Uh, it's only been one wipe so far. It's been one spring. Yeah, you're not wrong, but there are more in the deck now. Yeah. Oh, some altar sleeves here, I think, for the Savannah. Well, that might be a Temple Garden. Uh, no, it's Savannah. Savannah. I imagine that's altar sleeves. It looks I really nice. I think that is one. I think that is altar sleeves. Yeah, it looks nice, though. I do like these altar sleeves. Oh, we're green summon. We're green summon for two. Two, it looks like. Uh, probably getting Elvish Visionary here. Yeah, we need to start. You know what? I'm probably going to say this. I'm probably going to regret this, but I would like to see a second el a second Grist in Elves in the sideboard for exactly situations like this. Like this, uh, freaking uh, bridge, stuff like uh, uh, what's called Insaring Bridge. Those types of matchups where you are not going to be able to win through your Crater Hoof hit, I do really like hey, Grist. Oh, yeah. FNM promo. We're going to hit that trigger. We're going to see where we're going with this. And thank you, of course, everyone who's watching. Uh, I mean, we can't do oh, this yeah. without y'all. Um, these are our players from the Discord. Love them to death. Always great to have a nice shout out for them and just to get some good magic going. And if you don't know about our Discord, hit exclamation point Discord in the chat. We run events like this all the time, especially our Saturday weekly challenges and our Sunday bi-weekly challenges, uh, especially for that time zone for the European APAC region time zone. We just yep. need Shaman of the Pack. Why I need Grist? Yeah, easy. Yeah, exactly. Easy. Just run easy. Shaman of the Pack. Uh, excuse me, I don't play. I don't speak modern. Easy. No. Easy. Yeah, just easy, just, easy. just unban Deathrite Shaman. We're gonna be fine. Just unban oh Deathrite Shaman. We'll be, fine. Oh. we'll be fine. I would love it if they unban Deathrite Shaman. Uh, but at the same time, I would hate it. You know, I would. I would love it if they Fair. did it so that it couldn't be played in Delver decks. That's all I. Would, I don't want it to be played in Delver decks. I just want to go back to the days of being able to play turn one Planeswalker and not care about my mana base. <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? I know. I, the only thing I missed about Deathrite Shaman is I missed the chance and opportunity to play Delver Blade uh, with uh, Deathrite Shaman. The good old Esper yeah. Deathblade. I, I, I missed that. The, I, I really missed out on my chance to really dig into playing with Deathrite Shaman because... I only got to play like one or two of my local Saturday events with it in Nick Fit before it got banned. As for Death Blade, it was such a cool deck. So much fun. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, though that being said, that same ban also came with Cataxian Probe, and uh, yeah, that needed to yeah, get, get Probe cool. needed to go. If you have, if you were not around for Get Probe, you were not around for the menace that was. Uh, yeah, um, Get Probe, you okay? Cool, it's in the clear. Uh, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal. Uh, I'm gonna use, um, uh, Cabal the Ritual, Cabal, Cabal, uh, Ritual, Cabal, Cabal Ritual, Ritual, Infernal Tune to Crack LEZ. <laughs> the worst part of where it was is when they'd be like, ah, uh, I don't know, like, I might be able to, uh, to get there. They get taxi and probe you, they draw the card, like, okay, you get there now. It's like, Oh, my yeah, God. Oh. if you all yeah. were never there for that, your tax improv was atrocious. It, yeah, let me peek at your hand for free and draw a card. It seems fair. In the old days, so when I first learned to play against Storm, Bryce, this guy oh, was just a foiled ant. Completely foiled. Everything about it. And... This dude was one of the best storm players, and he would he would do that pause, that storm player pause, where they look at their hand, they do a quick little count with their fingers, they look at their hands again, and then they're just like, eh, I don't know. And then he would always do that. Okay, I'll get taxi and probe you, draw a card. I was like, okay, now I can get there, and then kill you. And it's just God. Okay, damn. we have a meddling mage, and the name is something I'm not familiar with, so let me try and spell it out. It is a caustic caterpillar. Caustic caterpillar, yeah. Yeah. One green mana, one one with an activated activated ability of one in a green. Sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, boom! Off the top of my head, chat. Can I get some love for that? Can I get some love? 
I know that card. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't even remember this card. Oh, uh, All Star Banger uh, in Popper. It was also, I think it was actually even good in its standard heyday. And yeah, yeah, negative uh, rainbow. Yep, I, I, I'd be playing me some Popper with that card. Uh, and also, I play it in my Mirren deck. Yeah. So for those that know uh, know me, do love me Mirren, and it's one of my go to targets in that deck. So we did yeah. miss out. Uh, yeah, negative rainbow. You know what I'm playing? Tortex. That's we, my life. We uh, saw force and negation on the prismatic uh, ending. Uh, we're gonna do prismatic ending number two because you know we uh, we might as well. Uh, can we make more than? No, because we don't have a birch lord ranger. Nope, not yet. Yeah. Damn, that's the one benefit of Prismatic Ending in this deck is the fact that Virtual Ranger just does kind of create extra amounts of uh, value. And that is just so good to be able to just hit like four and five color things. This is brutal. This is brutal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't played Popper in a little bit. I play Scred, Blue Red Scred. It's a lot of fun. No Delvers anymore because they're not good. Blue Red Scred. Uh, honestly, the fact that, like, Delver isn't that good in Popper anymore is actually, I think, a good thing. <sighs> Dang. But do we have a... Okay, I was going to say, four mana, we better have a finisher here. So there is the... Court of uh, Graces? Court of Counterbalance. Yep. Yeah, I, I, think we're, I think we're wrapping this up, folks. Uh, Counterbalance does literally nothing here. Nope. Uh, because Allosaurus Shepard. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know why you wasted the mana or showed it off. I mean, it does trigger, and you get to see your top card. It doesn't do anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, you essentially get a scry. You do you get to scry. Care. Hey, look, there's another meddling mage. Uh, no, no. There is a Jace, uh, I think a Sylvan Library, uh, Swords of Plowshare. I think that's what okay. it was. And Jace got taken. Uh, makes sense to me. God. Fucking moat, dude. What it else just you does taking? this kind of stuff sometimes. I mean, you don't see moat often. You don't see moat often because uh, who has that kind of money hanging around? Hey, I but mean, at the same some time, some people just have moats. Just they just have moats, you know. Obviously, Lemon's got two of them in this deck. Like, like I gotta, I gotta respect the game aim though. Like, honestly, the fact that like I think moat. Are... No, that's a standstill. Sorry, there's a counter spell that's that looks real. There's a counter spell that looks like that standstill. Where it's the, the, the promo counter spell from like 1999 where it's like a wave. Yep, yep, I know that one. God, it's egregious that we have these like brain worms in our head. We're just like, yeah, that art, I remember that. It's 1999 vintage, just promo you want, from you, this era. <laughs> do you want to talk about how much wasted space is in my brain memorizing uh, just random cards <laughs> and like random effects and random deck lists? Oh, yeah. There's times when I don't go to sleep till like three o'clock in the morning because I just get this idea in my head. I was like, "Well, I'm going to build this deck now." This is this is the curse that we live in, being this ingrained into magic. It's great, <laughs> my lord. Hey, but uh, honestly, this uh, this game is going to 100% come down to a natural order. It just has to come down to a natural order to try and get uh, to get the Archon. Because what's important about the Archon is the fact that it does have Trample. So it can technically get in there and steal the Monarch. And then once once you steal it back, that uh, that uh, the, uh, the court doesn't produce any more uh, Flyers. So if you're able to kill like the one, maybe uh -oh. the two Flyers that they have. Goodbye, Allosaurus. Both of them. Ooh. Rip. Yep. And I was going to say, you have to find it before the Allosaurus's lead play. We did have some updates. We did uh, see the Thought Seize, gain some life, did some fun stuff. Yep, double swords. Yep, double swords. Uh, you know, this is the problem. Yet, It doesn't have, like, absolute protection. Oh, yeah, wrong it... court. There are 1-1s, one but they still have flying. They'll get 4-4 four -four when you become the Monarch. Wait, wait, wait. They still have flying? Yeah. What? Yeah, they're one-one no spirits way. with flying. Yeah. Oh, I thought they created soldiers. No, they're one-one spirits with flying. And oh. uh, Lemon has not lost Monarch. It's not something that's relevant, but yeah, uh, it, it, Lemon has yeah, not I was mo saying, lost Monarch. I was saying if you're able to get a fast Archon and get in through trample damage, 
I thought it was, it was going to be more difficult to get it back. Yeah, that that's way harsh. That's way more harsh. Like... Yeah, I probably should put that on the screen. There, there, there is monarchy on this side. And we're going to scoop it up. Uh, yep. And this game is over. It's in the so, books. Unfortunate. It was so, a very sick deck from Paladin. Yes. As I definitely agree that Numenels is still very effective at what it does. I, I don't know if it's time to bring back the uh, Elvish... Uh, what was it called? The three-mana elf that... That's not Elvish Reclaimer. Rex Sage? Uh, Rex Sage. I think it might be time to bring back the Rex Sage, but I don't want to go that far and and say that it's time. Uh, this is a very corner case situation. You're not going to see Moat that often. So, But GG's is for round number one. Join us back here after a short break for round number two. Sure, sure.